Hello and welcome back to Family Time. Uh, we're still continuing our discussion on teenagers. Uh, the last time we spoke about validating our teens. Today we are going to be looking at uh, potential areas for conflict. I have with me once again here Pastor Kinsley Apj, at Trinity Baptist Church head pastor, and his beloved wife, Pastor Mrs. Cynthia Apj. What we're going to do today is to, uh, the pastors are going to give us uh, the areas that they think uh, could potentially cause conflict in the home. And then on the back of that, they're also going to offer us uh, tips and solutions to how we can deal with, you know, these areas of flashpoints. So I'm going to start with you first, Pastor Kinsley. And then if you can just give us an idea, you know, if you can list some of these areas for us and then we will take them. I think that uh, every parent uh, will naturally know that um, there will always be a conflict when it comes to what program to watch on the telly. So the first area that we as parents must understand conflict will arise between us and our teenage children, TV. And uh, um, you want to watch TV, they want to come and play video games, especially the boys. <laughs> and uh, naturally, I want to watch Sky News. I want to listen to Joy News on ABN. Uh, I, I want to listen to The Standpoint. I want to listen to uh, uh, the news file. But my children want to watch The Only Way is Access and uh, uh, Hannah Montana. <laughs> and whilst I am busy, I want to listen to uh, Joy News, they want to listen to E! News. And so straight away, uh, we must understand that there's conflict there. And as parents, when you have that understanding that it's a way, it's an area where that conflict will arise, then you can, you, you can work something out. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, don't just say, I'm the dad. Of course, you are the dad, you are the boss, you are the head of the house. You, do, do I pay all the bills here. Mm -hmm. And as long as you live under my roof, you know what? If you're not careful what they do, psh, they run upstairs. They run to their rooms. And <laughs> okay, person, you want to add something to Yeah, I think um, as Pastor was saying that there has to be some kind of, they share the house with you. Their part, you know, that although you pay the bills and you pay the mortgage, it's their home as well. Of course, the dad has to enforce uh, certain rules and say, you know what, if when it's time for Sky News, I'm going to watch Sky News, but also come to and some... Chelsea's <laughs> playing. <laughs> and of course, when Chelsea's playing, Nobody can watch any th other thing, and, and if the family needs to understand certain things that you, you don't go, you know, there are certain boundaries you don't cross. But I think what is good is that if we allow the children to also understand that, okay, once I've finished watching, you can also have the chance to watch whatever you want to watch. So, and it's good that now, and then most people have the sky box. Uh, the good thing is that they can record what they want to watch, if it conflicts with the same time, what it will happen, you can record it. But having said that, that is also another area of conflict. I know that because <laughs> it happens in my home where they keep recording and then the, the, the disc space it's full is full up. Mm -hmm. Now dad comes home and looks at the thing, it's only 2% or 3% left. So dad goes and deletes things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come back and they think, I never got the chance to watch this because you were on Sky News and now you've deleted it. And so I would normally say a lot of the things that would be there would have already been watched. So you always have to go through with them. Oh, I'm deleting this one. Is that okay? They'll say, oh, we've watched it. Delete it and delete, delete it. Delete that one, but not that one. But not that one. Um, I think that it's a, it's a nicer way of dealing with it than saying, I am the breadwinner in this home, and so My everybody, word is law. that's right. It is true, your word is law. No two ways about it. Your wife also knows your, your word is law. That's fine. It's an established fact everybody knows. It's God has given that direction to you. So that's fine. But I think the way it pans out, and the way that you, um, you know, uh, 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 that, that you handle it is also very important. 
Uh, so I think fathers. <laughs> yeah, at, at times they want to watch, you want to listen to your gospel music on, on telly, ABN, Slice of Heaven, and they want to watch MTV. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Uh, and the truth is that uh, you, you can't make sense of, of what is happening, but it shouldn't be a big deal at all. Uh, you let them know, look, guys, you have been watching the telly all this time, you know. Uh, I'm only here, for, so just let me listen to the news. Yeah, let me just check out. I'm just checking out what is happening in the world. You find a nice way. Okay, okay, daddy, let me record then. Of the go. So, no, 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 no. I think that there can be something very important. Let's watch the news together. And at times, you are watching the news with them and they get stuck to it. But it is very important that parents understand that that is a, a major area of conflict in the house. And uh, uh, we can make it become a conflict area or we can make it become a pleasant area of resolving uh, our priorities. And at times, one of the best ways of getting them, have you done your homework? <laughs> Have you done your homework? <laughs> How long have you been watching telly? And for us, the rule is that um, uh, when I guess we're young, you can only watch uh, TV. Uh, those days, the, the Disney channels, and the, you know, when children are stuck to a Disney, uh, dis I'm telling you, it, it can consume so, hey, you will, you will only watch Disney channels Friday after school, Saturday and Sunday. The week you come back, one hour television, you go upstairs. And at times, it's when you set those rules earlier, it works. Then uh, having no rule at all in the house and anybody watches whatever they want, then at the end of the day it becomes a battle. It doesn't help. So it's a, an area where conflict can. It's nice to know that you have a democratic home, um, Pastors. Um, but what I'd I like to find out from you, Pastor, is that some parents would say, okay, the solution is that the kids have their own TV. Is that a good thing to do? Or, you know, should you have one central television so that is regulated? My, my, my kids have always struggled with me on that. And personally, I have vowed never to do that because of one, um, I want to know what they are watching. Because the Sky has over seven to 900 channels. What are my children watching? I want to know. No, I think there must be one central television. And uh, um, uh, there are times I'm not at home. They will come from school early. And most of the time, that is when children's programs are on. Now they are all teenagers anyway. They are grown-ups. And my little one has just completed the GCSE. So now she has a right to watch uh, uh, television, her e-news and whatever. But when, before writing her exam, she knew the only time she could watch uh, those programs were at weekends. And we came to a compromise and she understood. So personally, I do not believe that. Letting them having uh, TVs in their room is a solution, though some parents have succeeded in doing that by regularizing what their children watch. And parents who have successfully done that, I think it's a blessing. But for me, I also think it's a big temptation. You know, when a child has a remote control in the hand and uh, mom and dad, another, her door or his door is locked. And uh, the temptation is too much for a teenager. Mm. What do you think about this, Pastor? I saw you vehemently <laughs> shaking your head, in that, so you must disagree. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with, with, with Pastor because, um, you know, the things they put on TV after hours, do you know, they, they assume that adults are watching 
But these days, kids can stay up late, especially um, because of the mobile phones. They are, uh, what do you call it, is it? Um, messenger and the phone messenger and all of that. So someone can just message them and say, watch this thing. And, and, and but before you realize, you're sleeping. And they could at be watching. At 8 o'clock, you've already fallen asleep. Yeah, and you don't know, know at what stage they can wake up mm. 12 midnight after hours. The things that they show on television, mm. you'll, just be, you'll just be creating a big problem for your child. I think that is a no, I would say, if, if you have a way of regulating it, as in your TV only shows decent things, fine. But I just think that no matter how much you've got, if you can afford every television in every room, it's a choice I would not take because uh, I think the dangers are just too, too vast. Um, the media and the dangers of the media are too big that you, you shouldn't put your kids through that. They, even if they protest, it's for their good anyway, so they'll soon learn. <laughs> so one potential area for conflict is TV and you think the best way around it is to regulate uh, so that you all come to an agreement that dad watches tea, this program, mom watches that program, children watch this program at that time, everyone knows what everyone is watching, so that you can all act as each other's keeper in the home. Okay. Um, another area that I think could potentially come up is in the area of communication. I think we've, you know, we've spoken about this again and again and again, mm -hmm. uh, where you have, uh, and I'm talking about uh, the lack of communication in the sense that you know, they say teenage girls are moody, uh, boys are, you know, non-communicative. They're not moody, but it's just yes, no, yes, no, and they're in their room and the door is shut. So, Pastor C, with you first, uh, you know, communication, is that an area of uh, potential conflict? And if it is, how do you think we can deal with it? Yeah, um, I believe communication is, is a big area of, of conflict um, because in one way um, they think you don't understand. So even before they talk to you, even before you open up your mouth to answer or not answer them, they've already got it locked in their head somewhere that this breed of people called parents don't understand where I'm at. We are different, you know, different wavelengths. So I don't even begin to talk about it because when I talk about it, they, they won't even begin, they won't even understand. So I think every, that is probably part of the hormones that, I don't know what happens when they're growing up, is that they've got this weird mentality that we don't understand them at all. And so they, they won't talk when you want them to talk and they're giving you mono answers. I think that also it's because of maybe past experience of what has happened before. They try to talk to you and you either shout it at them or you judged them wrongly. Uh, and sometimes as well, parents, we, 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 we judge wrongly. Um, we, we don't hear the full story and we judge. And for their age, they, they really want to, don't want to talk anyway. And so if there's been a history of that, um, they don't want to talk at all. Uh, so I think that can be very, very difficult to handle when they don't want to talk. But I think one of the ways that we have dealt with, with this is that um, as part of growing up, they coil in sometimes. So what we have tried to do um, in the past, and we haven't been able to do so much of that in recent years because, uh, you know, um, again, parents get so busy that, um, but we always have to have time to go back to do these things, is that sometimes we take them like one-on-one, -on -one, even if, you know, the youngest one, you'd go to say McDonald's and just with them, just one-on-one, -on -one, two of, of, of us, and um, not because they've done anything wrong. You just want to connect with them. You just want to have time, one-on-one -on -one time with them, so that if there's anything, you know, they'll be able to start talking to you and communicating with you. But I've also found that it's also good to introduce some, somebody into your family who probably bridges the gap between their age and your age. Um, we have somebody like that who is a part of our family and who is between their ages, so they look to her as a big sister and they feel that, no, she will understand more than mum and dad will. And so sometimes you can, you can talk to them and they can also come and talk to them or have time with them, uh, interact with them, so that if there's anything, there's this big sister or big brother that we have that understands 
you know, <laughs> as, yeah. That's okay. What do you think? I know you don't have um, biological sons, no. but in your position as a pastor, you have a lot of sons. Lots of them. So for, you know, our viewers out there who may have sons who are at the age where they come in, yes, dad, yes, no, mom, and they're in their room and they're not talking to anyone. They've got their, you know, iPhone on and all the rest of it. How would they connect with them? Yes, um, it's very important that first parents understand that it gets to a stage in the uh, development of every uh, teenager where um, they want some independence. And we must not deny them uh, that, that uh, space and that independence when they just want to be in their rooms. And at times you go to their rooms and they are just lying on their bed, hmm. doing nothing. And uh, it's part of their growing up. Uh, they, they believe they are becoming adults. Their voices as have become more water being, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and they, they, just, they just want to grow up, feel grow up. And they just, they just want to be on their own. Just that the stream of everything is wrong. And um, anything that is done in excess is wrong. But we as parents must always understand that they need that. But when that is getting out of hand, we should always knock their doors and sit on their bed and talk with them. Come on, Johnny, what is the son? Uh, oh, mom, mom, it's nothing. No, 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 no. I know you are my son. This is not the way. If you think it's cool, it's not cool with me. Oh, mom, it's nothing. Trust me, mom. If I would have told you, okay, 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 <laughs> mom, it's that guy, you know, what guy? Then they open up. And, and it all depends on the relationship you have with your child. At times, it can be some people ganging up against you. And um, uh, a shocking incident that happened recently in London. Uh, a mom whose son had just started wanting to be on his own and was upstairs. And mom in the kitchen cooking. Uh, food ready, calls the son. No response. Come on. Shouts and thinks that is one of those moods. So mom sits down, eats. But still, so went up. The young man is not there. Then Phones, the, the phone rings, nobody picks it up. Then, by instinct, looks through the window. Ah, police and uh, uh, paramedics and uh, there's a body lying down there with the paramedics attending to the body. Then she recognizes a coat that comes from her house, her son's coat. A mom's instinct runs down her son. The boy received a call, got down, said, Psh, got stabbed. Oh and um, so as much as it is important that we allow them to um, have that privacy, uh, we must also check out, we must always be checking out on them, you know, and Come on, Johnny, what is this, son? Come on. And that time, just tell me, Sonny, I just, I just want to hear your voice. Just sing me one of those songs. We used to sing, oh, mom. No, okay, you don't sing, I'm not going. Come on, daddy. Say, no, 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 son, tell me something today. Come on, I was good. Just engage. You see, and, 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 and the truth is that young people love that. No matter how they become mature, and try to they love that. It's a sign that you care. Mom, I'll be okay, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. Okay, okay, mom, I'm coming downstairs. You just go, I'm coming. And they'll come here, yeah, mom, what is it? Maybe 10 minutes, allow them to go back. But at least you've established if the fact that they are important to you, you love them. But when they start, seeking that independence as much as you must allow them, don't also allow that to become such that it starts to build a wedge 
between the two of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so we, we must persist with communication. If they're not talking, we must persist. They're not getting into an argument. Because some parents, it then becomes, oh, you're not talking to me, and then it becomes mm. a disagreement. Don't tell the child, uh, today, uh, uh, what person? You know, <laughs> how do you say that in English? <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. You Today say you that think you are, you're yeah. so you've grown up, you know, yeah. you're so become arrogant, you yeah. think you are, no, 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 no. Mm. Mm. Okay. It's part of life. Mm -hmm. We must get that understanding yeah. and take them through that. Walk them, walk with them through that stage. Mm. I think um, James Dobson uh, said something uh, in one of his books, the, the, the Parenting Guru. He said that um, teenage years are such that a lot is going on with their hormones and all of that. They don't understand themselves what's going on. And he said that most of the time, we need to look at it as these children going through turbulent seas, in a boat, going through turbulent seas. And he says that his in his observation, it is actually the parents that actually tip the boat over <laughs> into the water. Because parents also don't know how to handle the thing. We get angry, we get disturbed, and then instead of helping them stabilize, we rather, out of anger in the things we say, actually turn the boat over. Um, it's you know something that I, I'm always always reminded of um, since I read that 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 thing. And so sometimes, as Pastor was saying, um, they would say, "I don't need you," yes. by their action, by their body language. But I think they need us more. And so when they say, "Go away," you say, "You know what? I just want you to know I'm here. Or, you know, I'm still around. Or your mom is here." And then sometimes, um, just take them to shop. You have to go shopping and buy something, or go up the road to get something. You can just say, "Come with me," or "Give me company as I go." And most of the time, they'll come with you. But it, it's not an easy time for them. Neither is it an easy time for the parents as well, because as Pastor said, the parenting doesn't come with a manual. So you think that your child should be talking to you, and so you have to do everything, force them, argue with them, and then it seems to just get worse when mm -hmm. we do that, those things. So I think sometimes yeah. we've got to be relaxed as well. I think sometimes yeah, parents get a bit uptight about yeah. things, and, and especially when they feel that their child is going a bit wayward. I think that it's time to, to rather, it's tough to do that, but it's time to sit back, relax, don't let it get to you so much and pray about it. Leave them in the hands of God and do what you feel is right to do. But leave them in the hands of God and believe that they'll turn out right. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, when our children are growing up, when all my guests were growing up, there were songs I composed myself for each one of them. And uh, uh, um, when I, 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 I see that uh, uh, they are becoming too quiet, and uh, I just go. I just start singing for them, uh, 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 and they laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. So straight away, I break their eyes. You know, I remember recently my my little girl. Uh, uh, I don't know what happened. She, you know, she's just, she was preparing for exams, so busy most of the time after study. And I just felt, you no, know, I've, I've not been seeing my girl the way, even though what she was doing was very positive. I just went after, saw that she was changed. So when she came down, said, I, I, I just started, uh, 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 I, just when I was about to sing, one of those, uh, Daddy, I remember when I was a little girl growing up, some of the songs. <laughs> You used to, I said, oh, I was about to sing for you, come on. So I started. You started singing uh, for her. And oh. they all st become silent and they just listen to that sing. And I think that that rapport with our children, with our teens, that relationship is healthy. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor. Thank you very much, Pastor Cynthia. Unfortunately, as usual, just when the discussion gets very exciting, and then that's when our time is up. So our time is unfortunately up for today. 
Um, so we'll come back and when we come back next time, uh, we're still dealing with uh, potential areas for conflict. Uh, we've done only two, there are quite a few, so there's more for us to discuss. So when we come back, we'll be looking at things like chores, uh, how they clean their rooms, how the, you know teenagers actually talk to their parents. These are all areas that we think could, you know, are potential flashpoints and how to deal with them. So thanks uh, for joining us for this episode and come back next time. Mm -hmm.